Uh, like Cindy said, I'm Brian Dial. I oversee the GIS team here in St. George, Utah for the Energy Services Department. Now, there we are. We're going to talk some cool stuff. I did an article a while ago, um, or a presentation a while ago, called, um, sort of Star Wars themed. That's where this is coming from. I'm trying to continue it on because we've made some more stuff. But a little bit about us. You know, St. George is a beautiful, idyllic city in southern Utah. We're known for national parks, beautiful year-round weather, and amazing outdoor, well, everything. And we have been the fastest growing city in the country a few times over the past uh, number of years. Um, we've seen significant growth. Um, in 2010, we were about 72,000 population, and currently we estimate ourselves to be at about 92,000. And that's full-time residents. It doesn't take into account our population can really double in size during big events, such as the upcoming Ironman North American Championship here in St. George, Utah. So, you know, we have a lot of growth and we have a lot of visitors. Some of the things we're looking at there and I'm bringing up on here is we have about 36,178 electric meters and 33,000 water meters. Now, we do mostly power, but there's a lot of overlap between water and power, and we'll get into that a little bit later as we go on. So, all this growth and this change and everything, we've really had access to the right tools over time to make sure we could thrive in these times. Now, we've been CityWorks customers for years. Um, in fact, there was a point when CityWorks actually held their user conference here in sunny St. George. And honestly, you should consider winters here again. It's just better. You know, and so I'm gonna move forward on in our story just a little bit before I come back to CityWorks because this overall concept is one of the biggest things we face problems with. And that's that concept of software versus a platform. And if you've been to any CityWorks or Esri conferences over the last few years, you've heard the term platform enough where it almost just becomes uh, background noise. But the problem is people are so familiar with software, whether it's their Photoshop, Excel, apps on their phone that they use all the time, that they just assume all things they use are going to be the same thing on a computer. But larger platforms like Esri Clouds or, you know, our CityWorks stuff um, becomes a place to bring all these different tools and things together, not just do simple things. So getting people to understand those slight different concepts has been super important. Now, I won't say all our field workers can explain and detail to you the difference between software and platforms, but making sure management and supervisors have an idea of the concept really helped clean up a lot of issues. So coming back to the story uh, of St. George, let's start with some of the challenges we face starting with. Now, we've had CityWorks for years and years, but generally people were treating it as digital paper where they saw a work order and they would see it just as a file that they handed from one person to another. And it was physically moved around. That was how they mentally saw it. And so they're working on it. They're the only ones who see it because it's on their desk. And they would use their little submit to field to move it around to one person to another. And when you have a very linear works flow and very small amounts of employees, that could maybe work. But for us at the time, the entire city was on a single site and a single domain. So it was really easy to get things confused. I mean, if you wanted to send work to Smith Jack, but we also have Smith James and Smith John on either side of him, and those other two people work in different departments and no one saved searches or set up to find lost work, it's way easy to accidentally click the wrong, wrong, wrong name on such a big list. And we would end up with a lot of lost work. Now, you guys might run into this too, and maybe you start trying to build the right saved searches, but it ends up becoming really hard because not only there does it get lost, but it makes things really, really slow to get work done. You know, you have your supervisor create it, gives it to their field crews, they do the work, and then they change the submit to, 
to people in the office that need to see that ID. But then those people need to remember to change it to the GIS team that needs to see it to verify map it. And then they need to remember to change it back to the supervisor so he can close it. And the problem is none of those last three groups work in the same building most of the time and aren't even aware really that the other people are working on it. Plus someone does go on vacation and it just ends up locked in their inbox and again, it's lost in a different way. And this kind of problem caused a lot of frustration, made people a lot less likely to use CityWorks, which is a problem. If people aren't using it, you can't do cool things with it. And it just starts snowballing to a lot of other issues. So we reworked everyone's work. Now, with the initiation of work, there still starts the same. One person brings it and sends it out. But the first thing we did was get people off that submit to item. And we're starting here because you need to get this to work before you go forward. Now submit to is just for the person doing field work. And once they mark it complete, they're done with it. It leaves their inbox. And that's where the magic started. So now once they hit it, now everyone, finance, a supervisor, GIS are all able to independently complete their work. You know, once the status is too complete, the supervisor gets the work, can review and close it, doesn't affect anyone else. The office that needs to update stuff uses the resolution field. They can mark that updated and they're done. And the GIS team can do their work once they've updated the update map or the GIS completed, they're all good. And that happens all independent of each other, it can be done in any order and no one's holding up anyone else's work. It's really led to an increase in satisfaction and platform usability. Now, with all this smooth sailing in place, Doing all this work beforehand, we were finally ready to start exploring the real potential of the platform. And we wanted to look at places we needed the most help with getting things just running better. So step in, application programming interfaces, or APIs. You know, in theory, those are really just a simple way for one program to talk to another, another like a Rosetta Stone of computers. So let me tell you about our inventory and our warehouses and how we went from wondering about what we have to knowing who took what when. So, you know, we use Storeroom, one of the great CityWorks apps, and it's been an important part of our warehouse for years. Now, the problems we faced were really a difficult to use interface that doesn't work well in the field and didn't make tracking things easy in the building either. We don't have thousands of items, but we have a whole bunch of them. And they end up being super similar in name, just a change in gauge. And when you're trying to do that on a computer in the field, on an app or tablet in the field, or hell, even in the warehouse, sometimes when you're in a hurry, it's easy to accidentally choose, you know, a one amp, one aught number two amp instead of a one aught what aught amp, just on a list. Pulling it off the shelf's easy, but getting the paperwork right, we really need to make that work easier for people because it just ends up feeling tedious if they have to sit there too long. And you have this beautiful system built by engineers who haven't really done that day-to-day -day work. So you end up with things that work on paper, but fall apart actually. So our annual inventory would end up taking weeks where we would print out forms, paper forms, with the count, tell people not to take stuff, keep track of everything, physically count everything, write it down. And once we have all the paper, we go back into the computer, open up CityWorks and adjust counts based on what's there is. And storeroom in the field got even harder once we actually started using the mobile app a lot more because it's not really as user friendly to get into the storeroom. They have lists and stuff, but our workflows end up being so different week to week with our crews that you can't build a uniform way to do it. So we had a lot of moderately unhappy people. And, you know, our warehouse manager had for a long time wanted to make the warehouse work, like they said, a supermarket. Everything checks in and out. This is a beautiful idea, but it has a lot of logistical issues. And it was kind of dismissed for a long time as just a pipe dream until I was at the City Works user conference a few years ago in downtown Salt Lake City. And there was a new vendor there, Radley Corporation. 
and they were all about scanners, barcodes, and inventory. So obviously our interest was pit. So we decided to start with them and we went off to the races. So to show you a little bit of what we've done with them. Now they had those rad scanner guns that allow us to check things in and out. And we start with that challenge of getting the software to talk. But we get the CityWorks APIs and the Radley integration with their hardware. And on the back end, it works kind of like magic because I don't understand how that works. So it's got to be magic. <laughs> but really, with the APIs talking to each other like they're supposed to, the scanners worked great. It was fantastic. And that's when the real challenges started making workflows work. Now, the normal interface, you pick up the scanner, people have to type in a work order number, then they scan the items we use. So we decided to start with the best flow is to have crews scan everything they take out for a particular job. So they'll scan it, boom, I take three of these, three of them, take. And then at the end of the day, they if they took eight fuses, but they only used four, they go down the their work order on the app or on the computer take off four of those fuses they automatically go back into the warehouse inventory and we have proper pricing now the work order numbers typing those in typing numbers longer than two digits is something you should always avoid and so work order numbers was annoying so the apis came to the rescue again um our city uh, gis administrator trace stanford was a magic fella who was able to take those APIs and he created this web page you're seeing here, which takes the APIs, talks to CityWorks, and then creates a series of QR codes based on all the open work orders that we need. And you can see they're color coded by supervisor. It gives you the work order number, who the supervisor is, the kind of work, where it's at. So when you come in to the warehouse, you grab a scanner, you can go to the board, see which work order it is, boop, and then you just, as you go pick up items, you scan them and you get going and you're good to go. And it is just so nice. And accuracy has gone up and we've seen an amazing accurate improvement in accuracy in time. Yearly inventory now takes a day, maybe two at most. And because they just do it right on the scanner, they scan it, tells them how much they are, should be there, count it, boom, they're done. And we're able to do more cycle counting which we hadn't really done before because it was just time prohibited, where we can say how much should be in this. And we go through all of our inventory every couple of weeks. So we have happier people, not to mention cost savings and the right amount of materials on hand. Now we saw a lot of success here and decided, hey, this platform thing's working great in the department. What if we started using APIs to work with other departments? So for our customer relationship management, our CRM software, we use Tyler's Encode product. So we wanted Tyler's Encode and CityWorks AMS to talk to each other. Now, this is the way we were getting through these problems. The customer service rep would get the information, type it into Tyler, and then they would create a PDF from that service order. They take that service order PDF and email it <laughs> to the field workers. Now the field workers would then take that PDF, take that information, type it into CityWorks, and then they would go do the work, and then the CRM rep go, logs into their CityWorks, sees the info, grabs the info, types it back into Tyler. This is not a great way to get things done. It creates redundant work, it introduces a lot of opportunities for mistakes because like I said, numbers, and a lot of our stuff deals with long numbers. You ever looked at your electric or water meter? That ID number is really, really long. So we end up with so many opportunities for human error, just little slight things too. So we really were in a problem. We found it frustrating. We had two separate people doing data entry on the exact same info. And even though there's copying and pasting, this ate up hours every day. And so we're sitting here talking, and I hit up um, the best customer service rep in the business, Joe, and I'm sorry, Joe, Paliami, I may have pronounced it wrong, but 
man, that guy is fantastic and great. And I asked him about finding help to getting City Works to talk to Tyler better. And Joe recommended Miller Spatial because they had done some integrations on that before. So they came in and I'll tell you, we've seen some fantastic changes just on what we're calling our phase one on it. So right now, the customer service rep types it in to Tyler, the API does its magic on the back end, goes into City Works. Our field people don't even type anything. They just go do their work. And now right now we still have the customer reps logging into their city works and then putting information back in. Part of that's a quality control. But we do see in the future getting that to talk both ways so that we can eliminate some of this other work. So we're pretty excited with it. And we hope to do start phase two either this year or next year. And so overall, I just want to talk about the best solutions we've found is when you take the whole system into account. You really need to think about what are managers and administrators looking for? What are you looking for? How do we measure those things? Is everything built correctly? And the most important thing that seems to be overlooked sometimes is how is the work actually done in the field? And can we make the tools we have work with how they're doing things now? or do we need to change how work is done? And you have to be careful with changing people's work because if you keep changing things really consistently, what we found is you get a lot of fatigue from people and it just makes them less likely to do anything with the software and the platform, let alone to do it right way. Now, our greatest things we've seen, we've seen a lot of success here. We've really saved at least about 20 hours a week of data entry. And with inventory, we've saved over 80% of time savings with that. We have more cycle counts and fewer errors that need to be fixed, fewer times trying to find stuff. And the biggest success of all is people are actually using it. Nothing's more important than that because it's when you have data coming in, good quality data coming in and people wanting to do it because it makes their job easier. That's when you get real successes. And now getting people to do it just because sometimes works, but when people feel like they're heard and they're making adjustments, we found so much success with that. And we have just been so grateful. And these two integrations so far have taken a lot of work from some amazing people. Um, we worked with our IT, our other departments, um, other GIS departments in the city. Um, it's just been a collaborative issue all the way up and down. And going forward, we're just going to have a better center of data. We want to get that CityWorks data to Tyler better, like we talked about. We're hopeful that in the future we'll be able to get access to some of our SCADA systems to get more live data and mapping, just better reports and live analysis. We are super excited with what we've seen so far. And when you get your mindset in the right place, when you get your paradigm just right, it makes a lot of these other things flow just, just like butter. So we're super excited with everything we're going. and It's just been great so far. So that's me, so thanks.